Hi, welcome to The Passionate Spinner. I'm Tracy and you can find me as Schnüffeltier on Ravelry and on Instagram. I'm going to leave links down below. And thank you so much for being here. It's been a while, um, but today's video is very much worth coming back. So I went to the Swiss Yarn Festival. So this is my Swiss Yarn Festival recap video. Last weekend was the Swiss Yarn Festival and it was just amazing. It was an amazing time. I left my house on Friday. It's a two and a half hour drive from me. You know, it's not that bad. And uh, I was actually teaching classes this time. I taught two different spinning classes. I did spinning for socks on Friday and I did core spinning on Saturday. And I think that both classes were amazing. They went really well. The people who were there seemed to be very happy with what they achieved in class. So I was just very happy about that. And then, of course, I hit the marketplace and I got a lot of things and I'm going to show you. And I just had the most amazing time. So I left on Friday morning. I came back Monday afternoon because the festival was Friday afternoon, Saturday, Sunday. And I didn't want to drive home Sunday evening. So I stayed till Monday with a small group of people um, who also just went home on Monday. And I just had a fantastic time. I met a lot of wonderful people. Um, made lots of new friends and met old friends and just, yeah, it was amazing. So the Swiss Yarn Festival is relatively big. Um, there are three large halls with vendors. There's tons of classes all throughout the weekend, like Friday afternoon, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, filled with classes that you can take <clears throat> for all kinds of things. There were crochet classes, spinning classes, knitting classes, embroidery on knitting classes. There is just so much stuff that you could do. And like I said, so many wonderful vendors from all over Europe and not just, not just a small group from close, but like from everywhere. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to show you what I got. And what I got is all in a bag that I also got at the festival. And this was like the one thing where I was like, oh my God, I need this. And I, when I got it, I just held it to me like this so no one could take it away. And I know that might be a bit weird, but let me show you. So this is the bag I'm talking about. And this fabric's just, I mean... It's perfect. I have made a sweater for myself out of a like a French terry that has a bird on it that looks almost exactly like that one. And it's also gray. So I just ah, fell in love with this bag. I got this bag from Atelier Edelfaden. They do have an online shop and they also have a physical shop like a brick and mortar store in Switzerland. And um, it's a husband and husband duo. One of them is a dyer and the other one makes bags and I got a bag. And there is, um, yeah, I just, I mean, this bag is just perfect. So I was super happy with it. And in it is everything else that I got. Preview, look at it, lots of stuff. So I'm just gonna grab things. I am not always sure who the maker is when it doesn't tell me, but this one does, this one does tell me. So I got a drop spindle and this is hand painted. And I just fell in love with it because it was so different, you know. And this is what it looks like from the bottom. You can't really see because, you know, it's hard to show. Well, you can see it like this. So I got this drop spindle from Faser Atelier, um, a Swiss, a local Swiss maker. And I just found it so beautiful. I haven't spun on it, of course, as you can see. It's brand new. It is relatively heavy. It's 50 grams. But... I just like the design so much that I just had to have it. Then the next um, accessory that I got was this sock ruler. This is the company. And the theory behind these is that when you're knitting a sock, you put it into the sock that you're knitting and it will show you when to start the toe. So it tells you the like normal foot length for socks, how many stitches you have to cast on, and it will tell you where to start your toe. And I wanted to have one of these for a long time, 
but I didn't really want to um, order one online because I wanted to see it in person, you know, and this is very relatively thick, so it doesn't break that easily. And um, the vendor had two different kinds. They had these ones, but they also had them in foldable with a like a screw in the middle so you can collapse it into half of the size and also different versions for <clears throat> what was it not centimeter and inches but something else I don't remember but it also has like a little uh, needle gauge on it so I'm very happy with that one because you know I need lots of socks so I have another small wooden toy and it is a WPI cage because I don't have one. <laughs> yes, I know. I've been a spinner for 15 years and it's the first time that I have one of these. This is um, from Twig and Horn. I've never heard of them. I got that from um, a Swiss shop where I also bought a book. But I just decided to finally get a WPI gauge. This is for spinners. So... Um, the theory behind it is you can see those grooves and when you spin a yarn you can lay it on top and it will tell you the yarn weight that it is. Um, so yeah, I got that one. Then I'm going to continue with the non-yarn. I got a yarn bowl <laughs> and the maker, the potter who sold it, she's like, I've been carrying this little thing around with me forever. No one wants it because it's kind of unusable as a yarn bowl because it is only this big. It is super tiny and I will probably not use this as a yarn bowl because, you know, it only holds like leftover bits. But I just found it so cute that I got it anyway. And I might just put it on my desk to hold sweets, you know, candy, because why not? I do not know the maker. Oh no, I do know the maker. Ha! It's Torn Topf. Um, so yeah, I just fell in love. They had beautiful yarn bowls in all sizes and all colors, you know, big ones, different shapes. But I wanted to have this tiny one and I'm very happy that I got it because I just think it's super cute. So that is that. Then let's get this closer. I got two crochet hooks. I wanted to have those crochet hooks or crochet hooks like that for a long time. And I just fell in love with two of them. So they have um, polymer clay handles. And isn't that just, I mean, so beautiful. So this is a size four crochet hook, four millimeter. And the other one has a slimmer handle. It's a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook and it has those sunflowers on it. And I just, I could have gotten like a hundred of these because they're so pretty. Um, I'm really happy. So this thicker handle is very nice in my hand, actually. So is this one. They're just really, really, really nice. And I do have a business card from them, but I do not know where. So I cannot tell you right now who the vendor was. But they do have an online shop. But um, maybe I'll find the card so I can tell you. Um, okay, I think we only have one non-yarn thing left. Let me check. And that is a book. It is a book that I've wanted to have for a while, but I couldn't find it anywhere close and shipping would have been super expensive because this book is from a Finnish designer and it is knit this by Veronica, <laughs> Veronica Lindberg and she goes by Kutovakika. She has a YouTube channel, this huge channel. And, um, she just makes very, very pretty um, patterns. You see on the back, I really like that one. And um, this is her first book that she brought out. She has a lot of single patterns that you can buy on Ravelry. And I just really wanted to have this book. And I found it in Switzerland at the Swiss Yarn Festival. So I immediately got it without even thinking about anything else. I just ran towards the book and bought it. I'm trying to find a picture of her. Because I'm pretty sure once you see her face, you're like, ah, yes, of course. 
She looks away everywhere. Oh, well, let me, let me try. Where is your face? Well, I'm going to show you this picture because it's the best I can do right now. So she's the designer and um, yeah, I'm so happy that I got this book and I will definitely knit stuff from it. Okay, now let's get into the yarn. Friday afternoon, I taught my class, didn't even look at the marketplace. Then Saturday morning, taught a class. And after that, I went through the marketplace and I got everything I showed you so far and not a single skein of yarn. And then <laughs> in the evening, I talked to my husband on the phone and I was like, I haven't bought any yarn yet. I mean, why? What is wrong with me? And then I told him about these amazing people that I met who are Neil and Emma, and they are the owners of the Grey Sheep. And I just really, I like the people a lot. You know, they were amazing people, but also they raise their own sheep. They have them shorn and then they do everything themselves. They cart the yarn or cart the fiber. They spin the yarn. They dye the yarn. They do everything. And I just think that that is a, an amazing thing to do. So I bought yarn from them. And the first thing that I decided to pick up were four skeins in this awesome green. I mean, green is my color, you know, and this green is just so beautiful. So this is the Hampshire four ply and it is a, what is it? <laughs> it's 98% wool and 2% alpaca. And the colorway that I got is called Tracking the Wolf. And it is just such such a stunning color. So my problem was that uh, they only had four skeins left. And she, she has more at home, you know. But um, having it shipped from the UK, because they are in the UK, to Germany, is just not really worth it, you know, for one or two more skeins. So... Um, I'm going to make something out of these four skeins. So these are 50 gram skeins, but they have 220 meters per skein. So I have 880 meters, which is going to be enough for something. And I will show you what I have decided that I will do. So it's 60 grams per skein and 220 meters. And I already bought a pattern and it's right here. So I'm going to show you. I am going to knit the Shore T by... Um, Anivensel out of it because I mean this is a t-shirt supposed supposed to be a t-shirt right but can you not picture this in this I mean I think this is going to be very perfect and um not for summer but you know I need thin things to wear in winter as well because otherwise I melt so this is the first four skeins that I decided on and then I was like yeah, but I really don't know what to do yet. So let's just grab a few different other colors so I could do a bigger color work project. So I grabbed five more skeins of the same yarn. It's also the Hampshire four ply. And uh, just got five different colors that would work really well with the green in a color work. And these are my choices. I think that these five together would also make something very cool color worky, you know. So I'm just very happy that I picked them up and I will make something super cool with these. I have no idea what, but you know, there's time to find something. And uh, the last thing that I have to show to you is one single skein of yarn that I got at a different booth. And that was from the Giggling Gecko. And I just got it because I had to have the color. It's just... It's the most perfect burnt orange. So this is their Sarklandia Singles Base. It's 100% superwash merino. And the colorway is called Burnt Spice. And it is really pretty. So that's all of the yarn that I got. And all of the accessories. I mean, that's everything that I have to show to you. And I just... Swiss Yarn Festival is just such a good vibe, you know. There's amazing people there. The yarn and everything else that you can find is beautiful. There's, uh, they had vendors for yarn. There was fiber, stitch markers, project bags, hand spun yarns, um, crochet hooks. 
there was a woman who did jewelry that she had hand embroidered earrings and necklaces and they were just stunning um there were um two young men who did felted animals and i bought one of those but it's upstairs because i of course bought that for my child as a gift and he has already like um i have no idea where he put it so it's you know it's gone i cannot show you um there were knitting accessories spinning accessories there was a large booth who's had spinning wheels and looms and all of the things that you need to go with those things and it's just such a great variety of vendors and a gigantic variety of classes that are taught in I think three different languages German English French and yeah if you ever get a chance to go to the Swiss Yarn Festival, you definitely should go because you will meet amazing people, you will be able to take great classes and you'll find amazing stuff. So I'm just super happy. I had a wonderful weekend and I will definitely go again next year. I mean, the date is already set. I just have to put it in my calendar and I'm gonna go. So uh, yeah, that concludes my recap for Swiss Yarn Festival. And I'm just... I feel very inspired now, you know, spending a weekend with fiber people. I'm super inspired now to get back into the swing of things. So yeah, I hope you will be able to see a lot of things from me in the near future because I finally feel like doing stuff again. And that's all thanks to the festival. And now I'm going to go. I hope you all had a wonderful time and I hope to see you at Swiss Yarn Festival next year. Bye.